I'm back folks. Uh, I've got green lights on the um, streaming rates now. I'm not dropping frames, which is a very good sign. That took an eon. Sometimes when you um, get it to restart, it has to reconnect, renegotiate with the other end. But um, sometimes it just seems to get caught in a loop. It's really busy. And of course it's Friday night so everyone's going to be hammering it watching, you know, net TVs. So the service providers probably um, massaging the uh, contention ratios and God knows what else. I think we're back up, which is a good sign. Just waiting for people to catch up. And then we'll carry back on for whom's still around. I'm trying to remember where I was now. I think we were talking about um, some of the stuff that Laurie had been doing. He got the hyperam working. He had an external UART, FTDI type UART working, which he was connecting up via the PMOD tile. The PMOD tile itself has some issues. They are a bit of a nightmare actually because they're power supply issues. Um, and there's no easy fix for those. But um, I will still send the current ones out with the kit because they do have a use. I mean, obviously, Laurie's found a use for them, but you just have to be a bit careful about how you use them. I could add one mod wire, perhaps, um, on a supply, but it won't go to the normal supply bars because those are shorting for some reason. Well, I kind of know why they're shorting. They shouldn't be shorting, but they also shouldn't be doing what they're doing. Um, and I obviously failed to run the DRC properly before ordering the PCBs because there's a whole crap load of errors on the D DRC. Um, I fixed all of that now. If anyone needs anything changing on those, let me know because I'm going to order some more uh, fixed ones. I didn't have many anyhow, to be quite honest, but um, it's just a bit frustrating really because um, they're kind of handy to have. I will still provide them with the dev kits and then give you an update next month with the newer ones when I get them. Um, what else is on my list? Hold on. Is there anything else that Laurie's done? Um, yeah, something that Laurie started work on is um, Storm Sock, as we've now decided to call it, um, which is a name that Laurie came up with. Um, I kind of like Black Sock, but he'd already used that for an older project, which is still present and it's linked to, etc. So. In the end, it didn't look like a good idea to change the name of the old one, the old repository, because it would break a bunch of links. Um, so we come up with a quite a good new name called Storm Sock. So this will be the sock that we're going to be running on um, on ILB and Black Ice. It's um, it's it's an amaranth-based design. Um, the core is Minerva base, which is an amaranth design, and it, it's going to lean quite heavily on the amaranth orchard stuff, which is something that Gatecat and colleagues have been working on. Um, 
it also has hyper ram support in there as well which will be nice to get working um, and then later uh, Laurie's looking at um, working with Gatecat to see if we can get hyper flash support in the meantime what we'll do is probably he'll create a, a bootloader in BRAM and maybe a kind of flash in BRAM type solution temporarily but then uh, as part of the PCB order this month I'm going to do a, uh, a memory blade now the, the memory blade will come in different sizes I need this anyhow but in particular for the moment we want to be able to put uh, a Q spy flash on a mem on a blade that will enable us to use the QSPY execute in place support that already exists uh, in Orchard uh, to get things moving until we've got the uh, hyper flash parts of that working. Um, so I will get some of those made. Um, I can also later use this for QSPY flash as well, uh, QSPY RAM as well. Same pinout, same package, effectively, and we could offer cues by flash in different sizes, which is kind of handy. Um, what else was on my list? Um, so the, the there's also a new channel on Discord for the Storm Sock, which is where we'll be talking about that. Laurie's probably going to be doing the majority of the work on that because that's his. His thing, man. He's good with that stuff. And I'm, I've been working on the um, the repo is currently called MyStorm Logic. Sorry, MyStorm Ice Logic Deck, which is completely wrong because that used to contain both the Ice Logic Deck, which was the old design, and the examples and the documentation. So I'm probably going to refactor that completely. I've already started refactoring it internally, but I'll probably name change it as well. But that's um, where all the tile support is, or all of the examples and the documentation um, using the lab books um, that we were working on before. I'm going to get back to that, but I'm trying to refactor it right now so it all fits. And I may even put we currently have a separate repository called MyStorm Boards, and I may even merge that into this same repository. Although, I'm not quite sure what to call this repository yet. If anyone's got any ideas, let me know. Um, what will be there is mostly um, support for tiles and blades, you know, all the Amaranth support for that. Um, probably the board files for Amaranth and PCF files. All the examples for using tiles and blades. Then all of the lab notebooks, which is documentation that we're going to have, um, that we're going to build as we go along with the examples, etc. Um, that will include things like setup and installation and all those sort of things, as well as the how to run the different examples. You know, we need to have examples for each of the different tiles available, etc. So I don't know what we're going to call that. I haven't got a name for that. Um, as I say, the current name is is incorrect because that refers to a bigger hardware. Um, and that hardware part is now taken out anyhow because it's separated into Black Ice NXT and Ice Logic Bus. So um, I will rename that at some point when I come up with an interesting name. But basically, um, the other thing is the doc part of that and the GitHub I.O. part of that, will, I will uh, connect up to dev.mystorm.com. Uh, no. I will connect it up to doc.mystorm.dev, sorry. I did put the URL on the boards, I seem to recall. Or somewhere, where did I put it?
Yeah, I think it might be www.mystorm.dev when I do eventually hook that up. Not sure what to call the repository though. So it has examples, it will have the board support files, it will have the tile HDL support, PCF files, it will have blade support stuff. Um, I don't know if it's worth including the tile specifications and blade specifications in there as well, or whether to keep that separate. Um, but yeah, it's kind of where the documentation examples and the sample HDL lives, as well as the AMRAP support. So I'm not quite sure what a good name is for that. I'm being hassled now about the Wi-Fi because I restarted the router. Everyone in the family is like, oh, you've broken the internet. Right, um, what else have we been doing and covering? Um, covered the flash blade that I'm going to do. Oh, I've been assembling the kits for iPost and Western Long, and I have all this stuff here. That I've got to put together and I've got to do some more testing. I've got your VGA boards, guys. Do -do -do. They're all done. I do have to t still test these. Um, I've got the proto boards, but I haven't put the P mods on them yet. But I've got the headers on, as you can see. Um, so I've got those for you ready. I've made up the your seven segs. Those are all done, ready. I've tested those as well. And also today I finished getting these made. These are your Black Ice NXTs. Uh, these aren't tested yet. I've still got to do some testing and I know I need, there's a couple of small bridges on the TQFNs on the STM32 that I've got to sort out. But um, I've run out of the magic flux that I use. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get source some more. I found someone that sells like a five litre container of it, which I'm trying to order this weekend, which would be nice instead of the silly little uh, quantities I was getting before. But yeah, beautiful man, beautiful. Ready to rock. Um, and I, my intention is to get those out early next week. I do apologize for the delay. I was hoping to get them out this weekend, but because I lost Wednesday, uh, among other things, it's um, slowed me down. Uh, I post said things are looking good. Um, are you talking about the frame rate, hopefully, or your boards? Uh, Laurie said, I did test the VGA board as well, and that worked for me. Yep. Uh, I tested one here as well. That's cool. Um, he says, I can build the Black Crab firmware and program it. Oh, yes, yes. So, obviously, in order for uh, Laurie to do anything, he has to be able to build the Black Crab software and load it onto the, um, onto the Black Ice NXT and then have that program the Ice Logic Bus, which he's done successfully. Uh, and he's using the ST-Link 3 V3, and that's all worked pretty much one pretty much first time 
I mean, we did go for a long process, this process of working out what needed to be installed in order to get it work. There was one hiccup thing which was down to, um, was it LibUSB that you had a problem with? Laurie, I can't remember now. What was it that you had an issue with in the install process and setup process? I think it was LibUSB, wasn't it? Uh, Laurie will come back to me with that. Uh, I post asks in the meantime, do we actually need a V3 to program it? Well, the answer is probably not. You can probably use any ST link. Um, some ST links are better than others. If you can get one that has SWO as well, then you can see the uh, low overhead print backs without using an onboard you are, which is good from a debugging point of view. Um, there are other alternatives that are supported. I think things like J-Link are supported, but generally I think they support, uh, is it CDAP? Hold on. Let me see if I can bring up the page. We did look at this before. Uh, wowzer, that's a huge window, man. Let me see. I did have, actually. I've still got it open. I may have closed it. It's the SeamSys DAP support. Um, I can't find it. Let me just... Um, So what we're using is a thing called Probe RS, which is uh, Rust based, actually. Um, yeah. So it says here, um, ST link, J link, or SeamSys DAP based probes are supported, but it's not specific about um, which probes those may be. So your support may vary for SeamSys DAP. I, I'm not sure um, how many uh, different kind of JTAG SWD debuggers work with that. Um, so if I look at ST link, supported versions, the following version of the ST link are supported, ST link version 2 and ST link version 3. So you can use a version 2 or a version 3 by the looks of it. As I say, not all of them have SWO support, and that's useful for doing your debug printfs effectively. It's a very low overhead um, UART-like system, but it's built into hardware. Um, let's just check what iPost is saying here. You don't really need to program the firmware, is it? Or it already be there from technologies testing. That's true. The other thing is you can update it using direct DFU utils um, if you've ever used that before, which is fairly common. Um, you just need to start the board with the bit with the switch 
uh, pressed on when you power it up and it, the, the STM32 will then be in its DFU mode. You can use any DFU software to then program it with the binary which we will provide. Um, we tend to use DFU utils but your, your mileage may vary. Um, you only need the debugger if you're actually going to be programming the STM32 as well. If you're just writing HTML and that, you can just use what's already in the flash. Um, if Folknology produces a new version of Black Crab with new features, you will need to build and program the new version. That's correct. So if I update it and you want those new features, you will need to use DFU util to update it if you don't have a debugger. Um, but again, that's it's software and you don't need any special hardware for that. Um, okay, I wonder if Blackmagic Pro will work. Uh, the answer is no, because I don't think Blackmagic Probe supports um, SeamSys DAP. Um, I mean, you can use Rust with Open OCD and all that stuff, but it's laborious to say the least. And the default configuration, build configuration, isn't isn't designed to be built with that. So. Um, Western Long says, why won't the ST Link version 2 work? Well, if you look here, it does say V2 is supported by our Probe RS. So it should work. The only thing to be careful of, Western Long, is some of the low cost, like the Asian um, uh, copies, you know, like this kind of stuff. Uh, and I do have some of these if you need one. Yeah, if you're using these, these do support SWD, which will allow you to debug using version 2. What they don't support is SWO, which is an additional debug feature, which is uh, extremely low overhead. Um, you can think of it as an extremely low overhead print F. If I just move this camera again. Forever doing this. So um, yeah, basically you can do a little bit better. Um, if you're careful about what you choose, but I'm not an expert on different debuggers. I've used a few different ones in my time. Um, I'm not sure. Does West, Western Long? Do you do you know if um, the ST Link version two has SWO? Which one do you have? Do you have like um, one of the official ones, or uh, like one of the Asian copies? I used to use the Asian copies for years. Um, version three. Version 2. So the version 2, did this have SWO? It had, had SWIM, that was for their 8 bit. JTAG serial debug SWD features. SWD serial while viewer and SWV communications to support. What's SWV? It's confusing. Doesn't say anything about SWO. SWO is the like printf output. Uh, where would we get the details of that? More features? No. Uh, you might also feature video description, documentation, product specifications. If look at the pinout, that might give me a clue. I don't think it supports um, SimSys, for example. But does it support... Does basic SWD... Oh, these 
God, I hate these data sheets. They're really rather rubbish. USB driver. System requirements. I mean, it doesn't even give a pin out. How crap is that? Honestly. Right, we have to go to the user manual. Of course we do. What does it? What's the SWV for fuck's sake? Excuse my French. I don't even know what SWV is. Right. So. Swim. Uh, is that for the 8 bit ones? Acting STM32. There we go. ST Link version 2 connector CN3. That has SWO. And trace SWO. So I think with the S2, which one do you have, uh, Western Long? Do you have like a proper S? Uh, do you have um, an ST Link one or um, one of the Asian clones? looks like the S2 link from ST has the extra pin for SWO which is handy you don't need it but it's just if you want to see the um, printfs then uh, you want to have that you have an Asian clone uh, yeah well if it's like the one that I showed you uh, Western Long those don't have the SWO um, They don't wire it out, which is daft, really, because it's on the con microcontroller, that pin. What are you looking for, sweet? I'll be, it's in the freezer. It's tiny. It's all that's there. Don't leave all the doors wide open. We'll put it it would defrost. Um, uh, the other ones that have it, I mean... J-Link has it. You know, a, a good JTAG programmer that supports SWD tends to have it because it tends to share the TDO pin on a JTAG. So if you look at, what are these? Is it DAP Link? What is that? Never heard of those. Grandardo. What are you doing? You need to charge home, otherwise it's going to be too late. Okay, so you're not staying. What do you want? Now I have any of my stuff to stay over. Hmm. Bear with me a sec, folks. Hold on. Is it going to be okay to drive the car? I'm just going to mute for a sec.
Right, back again. So yeah, um, I don't know what any of these ones are like. Never heard of half of these. Particle. There's these kind of generic seam cyst dap ones. Uh, I don't know if these are any good. They have the full, they have TDO and TDI. What? Where's the rest of the pins? Ah, oh, there's two rows. So something like that might work. I've not tried one of these. Um, it'd be an interesting experiment to try one of these. Uh, Asian clones. It, ha it ticks all the boxes. I wink. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't actually cost much to have a go. I'm just going to add one in my car, actually. <laughs> I've got too much in my cart. <laughs> Oh, I've got all sorts in here. Let me get rid of some stuff. Let's uh, get rid of that. Yes, I'm sure. I'm gonna add it into my cart, and when I when I do my next order, I'll um. <laughs> I wink. Can't believe it's called that. Oh, Twinkle, what is it now? Do you want to say hello to everyone? Do you want to say hello to everyone? Is that what it is? Or are you after something else? Say hello, streamers. Hello, internet friends. I'm in high attention mode. I need lots of attentions. Don't take But I'm streaming. I've got to get on. Oh, you want to go through the door now? Then you'll me out. I want to come back. Cats, who'd have them? Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see if any of these clones work. So I might order one and try it at some point. Um, but yeah, right now, Laurie and I are using the SD Link version free because we know that works. I'm sure some of these others will probably work. Granado. That's the same board, isn't it? They're just changing the name. It's all the same board. We will see. Um, but as I say, if you're just doing HDL and Amaranth, you don't even need that. But it is nice to have if you want to write, you know, mess with the firmware or write code that's going to run on the STM32, obviously. Um, you can still write it with DFU. It's just nice to have the debugger if you get problems. So that was that. Um, uh, yeah, uh, Laurie mentions the having the right cable. That's a, a another issue. Uh, I don't know what those Asian ones come with. I'll have to have a look see if they um, come with anything useful. Otherwise, you might need to buy an additional cable that converts from, you know, the 0.1 inch header to the teeny tiny 1.27 millimeter. I mean, the ST Link version 3 comes with that. In fact, it comes with a whole crap load of cables and an extra board if you want it. Um, there is also, oh, I should mention this, there is another thing. Um, that may be of value. 
uh, T Link, which this is the same hardware. The great, but without all the gubbings, I think. I don't know if these are in stock. Oh, no, that's that's what we've got. In fact, are they in stock in Farnell? I don't know. Um, V Link Mini, come on. V set, V three V set is what we've got. But there's a mini one as well. So this is a miniature version. So it has all the same electronics effectively as the set does, but it doesn't come with all the like the extra board for the breakout for the other functions, and it probably doesn't come with many cables. Um, so this has all the functionality you need. Um, so this is another choice. And I think that's a miniature 1.27 mil connector underneath. But what does it actually does it actually come with any cable? Delivered with 1.27 mil pitch STC14 debug connector and an STC14 to STC14 flat cable. So no, that's not the right cable because you need an STC14 to 10 I think um, is there any more info on this this is another option except that cabling may be a problem so what that does is it goes from the miniature 14, which is the same connector that's on the bottom of the ST-Link version 3 set, except with the version 3 set you get an adapter cable that goes from the 14 pin high density, 1.27 pin to a 10 pin. Basically it's the inner pins that you want and the two extra outer pins aren't required. So you can do it with a miniature 1.27 pitch IDC cable. Um, but you basically want the inner pins and the outer two pairs are not necessary because they have other functionality that isn't used. Or you could do jumpers if you could get 1.27mm pitch pin jumpers. Um, you might be able to get a 14 to 10 pin or 14 to 10 or 10 to 10 and then... Ooh, would it fit on? Because they tend to be wider. They have this wider bit. You might stop it fitting on there. You might have to bend the other two legs out. But functionally, this is the same. It just doesn't come with all the cabling and stuff. Oh, we've got to open the user manual, have we? Because <sighs> there's no data in there. Because this is a data brief. Um, is there actually a link to the manual? No, of course there isn't. Don't be ridiculous. That would be far too easy. Manual. Here we go. This is quite compact as well, but it doesn't come with a case or anything. So it's like a little dip thing. Presumably it's lower cost. Is that a list of what? No. SWO up to 16 megahertz, which is cool. Shout 
Shame they didn't put a female connector on there. That would work. Potentially. Yeah, see it's a 14 pin, but you only need the inner 10 pins. If you look at the connector, you see you don't need one and two. And you don't need 16 and 15. In fact, all you need, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. No, this isn't. What the hell is this? Oh, that's the edge connector. So you can get access to the pins on the edge. Um, so yeah, if you look at the uh, the mini 14 pin, the first two pins are reserved anyhow, which you don't use. And the last two pins are for an extra UART port. Um, that's the other thing you can do, by the way, Laurie, if you, if you didn't want to use an FTDI cable, you can use the built-in UART on the ST-Link 3. You might not have realized that. But you can wire that using separate pins if you need to. Um, <sighs> so yeah, you only need the inner pins. In this case, from 3 through to 12. I don't know I like them. So if I look Making a note. making a mental uh, a physical note to myself on this so what I was going to do actually I don't know what the availability on the ST link freeze are I mean it's a it's a good product Link B3. yeah stock seems to be very low RS components seem to have some they have the mini Very few of the, the other ones are in stock. Wind source. I'm not sure about getting it from there. You can get them directly from ST Microelectronics, but they're not showing any stock. Oh, mods. Modular in circuit depower. Does that not come with any cables or something? Yeah, so they look like there may be. Um, Tricky to get. Arrow have 19. What is this one? Min IE. What's the IE stand for? I mean, the minis aren't a lot of money by the looks of it, if you can get them. $10 or $11. Our, um, RS components. Do RS sell to the States? I know they sell to Europe. So they look like they've got them. 
in stock. Um, but then you need the 10 pin cable. Available to back order, that's what it says. So why is it saying in stock? It's a bit cheeky. Oh look, there's a mini converter. Oh no, it's my cricket. Um, that's a bit strange. So why does it say in stock? And you click on it and it isn't in stock. Yeah, look at wind source electronic price. Ridiculous. Hmm. So they may be difficult to get hold of, although Arrow in China have them. But why do Arrow in China have them, yet Arrow in the UK don't? Why aren't they listed? I use Arrow quite a lot. If they say mini, the data sheet is all that's available. What? Huh? Is that what the difference is between mini and mini e? Nothing's happening when I click on it. What's wrong with your site, Arrow? Yeah, I don't think they've got stock. The fact that they're saying quote means they don't have stock. So it may be tricky to get hold of. Um, probably because the microcontroller is <laughs> In them are difficult to get hold of, my guess. But so why? But they've got some in China. That's weird. I still don't get why RS components aren't showing stock. Have they got the wrong number here? stock levels. There's none of the set and there's none of the minis. Oh yes definitely. Well that's not good. Bloody component shortage. That is very annoying. It'd be interesting I, I may well order this uh, Asian one and see if that works because if it does those will be available. Um, these all seem to be the same. I don't trust Windsource. Um, I don't really understand what the this version is. It's very strange. What happens if I click on this? Oh yes, it's in Chinese. So 
sorry, your access has been blocked because the URL you're visiting may pose a security threat to the website. <laughs> oh, that's a bit cocked up. Yeah, I can't see it. I wonder what the um, lead time is on these. What do Mauser say? I know, I've gone off on a bit of a squirrel here. Um, long lead time reported on this product. On order, 2,191. But it's not giving me any dates. And it's not offering me that. Okay, what about some of that DigiKey? Why isn't DigiKey on the list? Oh, yeah. I'll go away. Check lead time. No, no lead time estimates. That's not good. Okay, well that's enough on that. I wonder if the Asian thing will work. We'll have to just try it out, I guess. Um, Laurie's saying, most people won't need a programmer because they can just use DFU util, that's true. You'll only need the Rust environment if you want to build the firmware or write you know, your code to use the SGM32. That's very true as well. Uh, Folknology can provide new versions as a binary file to upload with DFUtil. Yeah, and I might have some of the ST-Link version 2 Asian copies if, you, if push comes to shove, which you might be able to use. Okay, what else were we dealing with? before we went on that particular squirrel. Hydration. Um, what else is on my list? So yeah, I've already updated the Proto PMOD tile ready to order some more. But if anyone needs any changes, now's a good time to let me know on that front. Um, the PCB order I'm going to make will include certainly the HDMI, the new version of the HDMI tile, the new version of the uh, Proto PMOD double tile, obviously. And I also want to get some blades made. I want to get a breakout blade made which is really just goes to a you know 0.1 inch dual row header um, which you can attach to using DuPont cables that kind of thing um, a breakout I think I'm going to call that the breakout blade um, I'm going to do a memory blade which has a footprint to add a QSBI flash on it um, I might need to do, redo the LCD blade because I've had problems trying to get that to actually... Th the problem is the footprint isn't very good on that. I think it it will be better, but I need to put some distance between it and the other components. They're so close together that I can't actually get in. So if I have a bridge on the connectors, which I have on both of them that I made, I can't get the iron in you know with some flux to actually clear the bridge because the components are in the way it's so close and crammed up so i just need to expand that a bit 
I think I've just gone a bit over the top in miniaturization. <laughs> Need to give myself a bit more room on that. So I might order some more of those as well. Um, that's for spy light displays, you know, with a 24 pin FPC connector. Um, one that I'm also thinking about is a UART one. Um, uh, Western Long's asking, that's done using the USB on the black ice. Yes. So all you have to do is when you power up the black ice, you have to have your finger on the DFU button. Then when you power it up that way, it automatically goes into DFU mode. You can then just use some sort of DFU utility to upload the binary to it. We tend to use uh, DFU utils, the open source one, but you can even use EST tools if you, if you, if you need to on Windows and things. Um, the UART thing was an interesting idea that um, Laurie came up with. Um, so putting a UART on a blade and of course, when Laurie said that, I thought, oh, wait a minute, um, maybe I can do it slightly differently. Because <laughs> obviously it'd be far too simple to do something like that. I mean, you can't get the damn USB serial chips at the moment. Although, uh, I think, um, I think on... Um, Unexpected Maker's recent video, he managed to source some slightly different ones. Um, I need to go back and have a look at that. So he obviously found some available, but they were different and had different components around them to the ones that he was using before, because he had to redesign one of these boards because of it. But um, I'll look into whether we can use that or not. Um, But there's two things here. One, Laurie, is we should investigate using the UART that's built into the SD-Link 3 because you might need not need an extra... I mean, you probably don't anyhow because you've already got an FTDI cable. But bear in mind that you've got the SD-Link there as well, which also has a UART port, which goes over USP. Um, but what I was thinking is rather than using one of these, you know, USB to serial chips is maybe put something else on there and I was thinking could I maybe put a chip on there that had USB serial and maybe Bluetooth or something or some other flavors because otherwise we're only using a couple of the pins which seems a bit daft um, and I'm still thinking about that any ideas on that front let me know what other features would be useful to have on that blade, if we could have them. Um, just to make that bit more interesting. And then, you know, rather than me just putting one of these difficult to get USB chips, assuming I could actually get them, and I'm not sure about that. I, I think, uh, I expect to make it, I had to buy a massive two reels in order to get hold of them. Um, at a reasonable price. I do have microcontrollers here that I could use. It could also do other things, maybe, possibly. Um, achieve the same function. Also, the other thing to think about is if we do the, you know, ESP32 Wi-Fi on it, that could also serve that kind of function as well to a degree but yes um, an interesting avenue to think about I look forward to your ideas and feedback on this one I've not made a decision yet um, what else those were the only things I had listed for the PCB production at this point. And what I was probably going to do is for the blades, I was going to panelize them into a small panel and try and do it in KiCad for a change. 
So that's going to be fun. Uh, just try pressing the DFU button when plugging the board in. Yeah, you know what? I have not tested it, Laurie. <laughs> I hope it works. Oh my god. Um, you should see it come up as a DFU util. So if you've got D DFU utils, you can do a list. Yeah, it finds it. Good. Thank God for that. It's pretty simple, really. Not much I could have fucked up there, but you never know. Thank you. That's another test done, Laurie. Save me the effort. Although you haven't tried uploading to it yet, of course. Candy time. New sugar. Don't actually need sugar. I've had quite a lot today. But it was sitting there, half eaten. So you get two of these in one pack. I couldn't just leave it sitting there. I mean, I don't know if you guys have used DFU Util before. It's fairly common. Obviously, Laurie's used it and I've used it because we used to use that. Well, we've used it for years with the black eye stuff. So basically, you just download the binary. If you don't need debug features, you can just use DFU. We're only being really flashy with our posh, expensive debuggers. I have to have this stuff for my day job work often. Right, any questions, folks? I think I've covered all my list. Um, we can do some work if you like. Um, possibly. Notice the colours. This is a new <coughs> arrangement. We made some small modifications to the black crab this week. First of all, on the ice logic bus, can you see where I'm pointing? red LED so now when the board powers up it comes up red because that's saying that the FPGA is not programmed the dumping is not being reset uh, once that's properly programmed when it's being programmed it goes amber because the green LED is connected to the CS pin on the ICE 40 so when you're programming that that becomes enabled so it goes to amber and then when it's properly programmed as long as it's a good image and the programming is successful it will extinguish completely if it fails it will be back to red so if it extinguishes and you're running blinky that means when you run blinky now you'll see it in blue and i'll show you that in a sec on the other side you can see the reflection because it's pointing down and I can put like a little sticky white square underneath to make this more visible, but you can use the reflection here because there's plenty of it. So now when it comes up, that's just indicating power up green normal mode. We're not turning that amber anymore. There will be an advanced mode. No idea what it's going to be yet. Um, or you can just use it for blinky on the STM32. And if you were to blink that, you know, the uh, red light red part of the LED would go on and this would turn amber rather than just green. Um, there is another LED connection which is connected to the interrupt pin which is connected to the blue LED. And the interrupt pin is also like the event pin for the SPI E which goes to the FPGA. Let me just show you whilst I'm doing this then. 
So if we run the blink, you'll see what's going on. Um, let me turn. I can keep that on. Let's have the IDE show. Let me first of all show you uh, black. No, let's do. We look at black crab first. So we're not running at the moment. So if I run that, this is the other thing. So these print F type messages are coming back over that SWO pin, which is a software debug output. It's like a UART, very fast UART, serial UART that comes back over the SWO pin. We have zero overhead, resource overhead, running on the STM32. It's all done in hardware, which is really cool. Here it's just saying, you know, hello, I'm here. Here it's checking to see if the flash chip is connected and it's getting back the ID and it's telling you that it's finished. If we then go and program this, we'll see this actually report that it's being programmed. So, um, first of all, let me just switch back to... Uh, can I find it, Captain? Why isn't it listed? If we go to Blinky. Which is a very simple... Um, piece of HDL. Let me just increase the size, make that visible for you folks. Um, so the LED in this case, this is actually the blue LED on the RGB LED which is on the ILB board. If you were to look at the um, board file, and I will cover that in a minute. So it just loads that and it's got a timer and it attaches it to one of the pins. So it basically divides the clock by 2 to the 24, which gives us a visible time period. So um, let's also increase what's going on here so we can see what that is. So if I now go to the top and just hit run, it doesn't work. At least I'm testing my um, error now, sorry. So you can see here, raised, port not found exception. We changed Black Crab, sorry, we changed the uh, MyStorm, what am I saying? We changed the ICE Logic Deck board file, which has the uh, programming software in it that automatically finds the port. Um, and we added, um, because Laurie requested it, that it froze an exception rather than just outputs a message. Um, so this is good proof that that's working. Um, why hasn't it found the port? I know I am running the code. Let me just have a look at um, DMESG. Bear with me. I've got it running somewhere here because I was diagnosing with it earlier. Oh, okay. So I sometimes get this. This is very, very frustrating indeed. You might have this as well. Sometimes, if I've been attaching and detaching a lot, uh, the um, uh, 
the USB part of Ubuntu gets upset. So what I'm going to do now is disconnect the uh, USB from the machine, then reconnect. Then I have to go and run Black Ice again. Sorry, not Black Ice. <sighs> black crap. Now I can see that it's come up on DMSG. So if I go back and rerun that again. That's better. So here you can see the success. When we've run that, it said, look, found device for uploading ice core. That's the wrong name. I still need to update that in black ice. Uh, sorry, in black crab. And it's found the port here. And then it uploads to that port. And if you look down below, reversed, can you see? I will use my trusty pointer. The blue LED is blinking and it's very clear. So none of this green, blue, green, blue nonsense where you could barely t detect it is now doing what it ought. Ta -da. It's all running. Uh, let me just catch up with the chat. Laurie's saying, is your QSPI code in a repository? He sent me a version via GIST, but I don't know if it's the latest. Western Long, you're right. You're in... That is not yet working. I mean, I have not tried the incomplete and unworking version. QSPI. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, we could cover some of that now. Um, let me come back to a sec. Let me just catch up. So Western Long says, definitely want to try the incomplete and unworking one. Very slim chance I might be able to help with something. So, yes, I think it's in another project. Hold on. Question is... What on earth did I call it? It was five, no. Sorry, I just got to go through a few tries here. Called this damn thing. No. What if I use an existing one? Hold on. We have a look. Um, right, bear with me. Definitely wasn't that. Did I put it here? Seven segments. There was, I'm just reminding myself where I was. There was this, this was a piece of demo code. This worked for receiving um, bytes. 
but that wasn't using the format that we talked about. There was something else I did. Um, wait a minute, where would I have put it? Q bus. It might have been there. So, uh, let me make that bigger so you folks can see it. So the spy memory one was a copy of what already existed for SPI, which we couldn't get working. And then I was working on the QSPI one, which was a kind of rewrite really, which was this, which I hadn't tested. That had a state machine. this yeah, there's a bunch of tests in here so is this committed hold on let me see if that's in the repo Laurie I don't know if I committed that or not on boards now. So where is that? That's at the top level of the examples. Um, so if you go to Amaranth examples flash test, I don't think it's there. Hold on. Yeah, it's there. So are you using um, the MyStorm Ice Logic Deck uh, repo at all? But if you have a list, look here under the you know flash test branch. You'll see there's a file called QBus. which is what I'm looking at here, um, which is untested. I've literally just written this. There's no testing at all with it. So we could do some work on that. I'll have to get my head around where I was, of course, but yeah. And it's not uh, resynchronized as well, by the way. Um, most examples now run as well that are in the um, in this area so the VGA example works as well which I change because that no longer has audio with it but I still need to refactor all the software because the software still talks about audio I just commented out those those areas and changed the pins and the bit depths so that the VGA works and that drives the monitor fine here and Laurie's tested it as well so that's working um, so it, in the QBus, there's, there's a couple of classes. The SpyMem class, I think, was a copy and paste of the original one that you pointed me at, that you and what's the face used, what's his face, and I couldn't get that working. And if you look in Black Crab, I've got versions that use single bit Spy, trying to talk to that, and it didn't work. And then the so that's the first one. That's SpyMem. And then my rewrite is called QSpyMem. And it doesn't have the same uh, state control. It's more explicit because it uses a state machine. And obviously it's using nibbles rather than single bits. So it's four bits. Um, but none of it's been tested or run yet. Um, so we need to get that working. I think most of the functions have been done in Black Crab, but I need to check. Um, and then I did have some experimental stuff that I was using at the other end to send from Python over the serial port 
the commands to test things. Got to try and remember what state this was in now. So some of the differences here is, remember we talked, right, because I'm reminding myself here whilst I'm going through the code. So the idea here is that we basically send a command and then we send an address and then we send data at a fixed width. So for example, if we just took the defaults here, at the top what you see is the address would be 32 bits, which would be, you know, uh, 16 nibbles. Uh, and then the address bus in this default case would be 16. So that would be eight nibbles. And it counts those, so it knows where it is in the state machine. But because if the CS pin is still being held down there, then it knows it's going to receive more data. So it just keeps receiving data bytes after this. And what it will do is then increment, obviously, the addresses that it's writing to or reading from or whatever it's doing at the time. But one of the things I was saying is this address bits the address bits here do need to be um, divisible by eight. But the actual address space should be smaller than 32 because the command itself, only one bit is used on the determination of read or write. The other seven bits can be used as address bits. So we've already got seven bits. So if you made this 24 plus you've got the 7 from the command, you've effectively got 31 bits. So it's much more efficient. But you could go down as low as having only 8 bits here. Yeah. Um, an 8 plus the 7 in the command would give you 2 to the 15 addresses, which is more than adequate in many many cases and that would be significantly less overhead for a read or write particularly if you're doing small read or writes i.e. small quantities so that was one of the things that this deals with so I, I work out how many nibbles i'm looking for depending on what how this has been configured so you'll see that being used in the state machine what i'm not doing is synchronizing the incoming uh, signals at this point and that needs to be done deglitching here is disabled um, just to make things simple to start with um, and then i just need to look at the state machine again and work out what the hell i was doing of course because it was a little while back So I was saying, not sure why I didn't see qbus.py. It's in my ch PyCharm project. I just ran it, didn't do much. Not sure how to sync it with the firmware sending data. Um, yes, so on the Black Crab side, let's just go back, switch back to Black Crab temporarily. Uh, I've got loads of instances of the same thing. <sighs> got to get rid of some of these. One of these must be working. I'm looking at the damn thing. Which one am I looking at? Not that one. Sorry, I'm just fighting with OBS. 
Well, it's telling me that none of them are doing anything. Hold on, let's see if we can find out. Is it this one? No. This one? No. This one. Yay! It is that one. So why isn't it showing it on the screen? Uh, black crab. Hold on. So if I just switch here briefly to all main. Black crab. If I look at the... Um, I do need to break this up into modules to make it easier. If I look in the FPGA implementation, i.e. the thing that talks to the FPGA, I have a bunch of different um, QBUS things. So QBUS 1 here uh, let me um, bring this into reasonable configuration so that you can actually see something. So QBus 1 was for the one bit version that I was trying with the SPI mem, the one bit, and that didn't work. And you can see that this is one bit because it's using a single data width transfer rather than quad, which is a nibble. Um, Qbus reg. So what we have here is uh, self address and byte. What's that one? We have a register. Command, address, and then a buffer. And this sends it sends a single byte. It's like a register, right? And Qbus address, single byte. Qbus send. Bear with me, because I wrote so many different versions of this. I think this was the one where you could send up to 16 bytes. So here you're providing the buffer and the length, but there's no address. Here we go. So bus send. So that sends an address. which is quad nibbles and up to 16 data points but that also requires length so this is the function that we'd probably be calling but we also need to send the command which isn't reflected here IWIP instruction. <sighs> Sorry, I'm just going through the code. So maybe we don't have the support. Uh, that we need the nearest one is this one. But what we need to do is have, is there a Qbus? There's a Qbus send, but that doesn't have an address. Qbus address. Some of these are historic, they're not actually being used. So we want something like this. So I guess what we probably do is I'm going to just do another coffee, which probably isn't a very good idea. It's just going to make it even more confusing. And then what I'll have to do is trim down the ones that we're not using. 
Uh, what's the nearest bus send address? Command. Uh, Q bus send. Hmm. Even this isn't right because buff transaction. Hmm. I'm going to copy this one. make yet another variant I'm going to call it for the moment what the hell happened there I'm going to call this Qbus. Qbus send. Well, let's just call it Qbus for send for the moment so we can differentiate it from the other one, meaning nibble. And then we need to use quad SPI to send the command as well. But we're going to need to do something fancy. Because what we're going to need to do is break the address down and the command down. I think we need the command as well. Um, Yeah, I'm doing it now, Laurie. Laurie's complaining because there's no nothing useful he can see. So on the QBus 4, what we're going to do is we send the uh, command. That's what, what goes here. Okay, and the instruction we send here, we'll work that out. I'm sure I've done some of this before, actually. I don't know what happened to that. something here So here I'm looking to see if it's read or write. What am I doing here? Yeah, so this what this is doing here is it's looking at the upper bit of the command to work out where it's read or write. And then it's adding in dummy cycles to read back. the number of nibbles clock cycles to read back so we need we need this so let's just copy that
we might need a max as well, that's a good point. I need to double check this. Basically what this is doing here, so because the upper bit sets, the most significant bit sets whether we're reading or writing, what this is doing is working out on a read, you send the commands first, then you have to keep clocking to read the nibbles back afterwards. So it takes more clock cycles. So this is what this is doing here. Uh, that then adds, adds dummy clock cycles. But in reality, it would have to do this according to the number of um, data length view size. So it should actually be read nibbles times um, 16. Which will be 2 times 16. And it's 16. Wait a minute, no, that's 16. Is that right? 16 bytes that would be 2 times 16 well 2 times u size in fact this is going to have a strange Return value. What am I doing? <sighs> Sorry, I'm just being an idiot. Forgive me. It's actually len. U size is a type. But because len is a U size, that might need a cast um, add safe cast to u8 yes um, so that would probably work now notice this is optimized because it can send 16 bytes because that's what the peripheral is optimized for up to 16 bytes. So the thing that's calling this, if we're sending more than 16 bytes, has to break it up into chunks of 16 bytes, which I haven't done yet. Uh, so this is Qbus for send. Let me just copy this. So if we now look at the bit that actually does the reception on the USB here, whichever command number it was, uh, that was the one bit version. So if we do, would this work with Qbus4, we need command, don't we? How do we know what the command is we need for? So let's look at what we're receiving over USB. So we've got the address bits here. So the assumption here is it's 32-bit address. We also need the command. So one, two, three, four. Uh, command command address buff view size command address buff five. Let me put this down below so I remember.
Um, Western Long says, by the way, testing divisibility by eight is simple in binary. You just have to check the last three digits. If the numbers number are naught, then and or and some of the others are ones or zero. Ones or none zero. I'm sure this is helpful, but fun fact. Yeah, there's all sorts of bit twiddling shortcuts like that. Um I'm just trying to work out here. I don't actually want command. I'm trying to work out when we're sending from the USB side, what are we sending? Before these were just control commands for different address modes. But we're kind of changing things here. Um, would we be saying on the USB side that we're always going to be using a 32 bit address? for example and then this has to convert it into its con constituent parts um, so it's taking the bytes for the 32-bit address here one two three four um, and this is a single data byte obviously which is not we need here um, or would we be building this up slightly differently oh right let's have a think the weird addressing scheme we, we can use whereby the extra address is so we could use 2 to the 15, sorry, uh, we can use 2 to the 7, 2 to the 15, two to the 23 I think it is, and 2 to the 31. If we enable those, then from the USB side, we only ever need to send the 32-bit address. And then it will convert it accordingly, irrespective of what we're actually operating on the machine. But what we have to do is we have to convert that into a command part and an address part, depending on which scheme we were using. That's what I'm thinking. Because our address scheme, we're using the command as part of the address. So we always send a 32 bit address, then the data, and we proceed it with the command. So, what we need to do is we need to extract seven bits for the command and then the rest of the address as a 32 bit, as a, as a U32 aligned to LSB, not MSB, in, you know, bytes, i.e. in eights. So we wouldn't, in this case then, we wouldn't be use. we wouldn't, probably wouldn't want to do this because we're probably only going to use that many bytes max. Hold on, three bytes plus another byte, four seven bits for the command. C 
command command address so the first bit gets set and then the other seven bits are extracted from the U32 sorry from the incoming bytes yeah sorry I'm not being clear um, so what I'm saying is from the USB host side we're just sending a 32-bit address irrespective of what we are um, so we're sending a 30, we're sending a command which is can be any number of different things right that are, they're not all QSBI commands we can have commands for writing to um, internal flash flash SPI flash that's on the SM writing to the SD card all sorts of different commands but the command that's concerned with writing over QSPI um, which in this case I'm saying is O3 um, and we may have an O4 one of them will be a write one of them will be a read okay We've then got to convert that to the QSPY transfer format. Now, the QSPY transfer format consists of a command byte, the first bit of which says whether it's read or write. The next seven bits are the MS most significant byte, minus one, because it's only seven bits, of the address. Then, however many address bytes up to free address bytes for the full range um, to pass down as this address here which is what we're creating here but the comad has to be created by whether it's read or write so comad will start off with you know if this was write say Then we know the bit should be, is it zero with the spy mem bus? I can't remember. And then if it was um, an 04 command, let's say, then It would be a read. Uh, and we'd need to be calling something other than QBus send. We'd need to be doing a read. Oh no, no, we can still reuse QBus send. But our co the, the comad here would be slightly different because that top bit would be different. The address is going to be the same in both cases. Um, oh, I'm going to start off. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the P. Yeah, the PC will have to send. Obviously, O3 for writing in this case. 32-bit address the length of the data being sent and then the data itself um, so we need to work out what the address of that is we then have to look at we have to create the this kind of address which is slightly different depending on the mode we're operating in because part of it will be in here um, one of and the most significant bit will be set by the this because it's a write or a read but also we'll have to look at the length of what we're receiving and divide it by 16 and call this the number of times you know divided by 16 plus whatever we've got left over that's what we're going to be doing depending on which scheme we're using so uh,
I was thinking, I mean, how much address space do we need? Realistically. Uh, Western Long saying, I thought this was the STM32 writing stuff to the QSPI, not PC. Uh, that's correct, but it's doing both. But it's re receiving the data from over USB in this case. It's acting as a bridge in this case. That's what we're trying to get working here so that we can send stuff from the host. But it, it could equally be doing it itself. I'm just trying to close the loop here so we can do testing and stuff. How much address space do we need though? Because I don't want to use more bytes than we need to use. I mean, I could go for the full two to the 31, but it just seems wasteful if we don't need that kind of address space. That's two, what is it, two gigabits? I think 32, two to the 32. And if it's 16 bit data, that's actually four gigabit, four gigabyte, sorry. We don't need that kind of address space. I just don't want to waste cycles on the QSPI sending data that will, you know, sending an address set of address bytes that we don't that's too large for any application that it's likely to be using I just want to set up a default here so that we can work on a test the PC will need a Python client it will yes but it's easy just to send some test stuff up I've already done that somewhere I need to find it Yeah, one of the reasons, there's a number of reasons this is useful, Western Long, because we may want to transfer information into, say, the HyperFlash or the Spy ROM. 24 bit or 23 bit address should be sufficient. So if it was a 23 bit address, take the 7 off, we're left with 15, 2 to the 15, aren't we? Sorry. We're left with, if we take 7 off, we're left with 16 bits. So we only need 2 bytes for the address. Yeah. So on a 13 bit, so we only need effectively um, 32. though this will be transferring 32 bit, we can ignore that part because it's irrelevant right I guess one of the ways we could do it I mean we could still write that in there but so we need to set this up first the comad um, so comad just um, do that. <sighs> Let that. Oh. Uh, that's going to be U eight. Um, it's going to equal. In this case,
but then we've got to get the address, the most significant byte of the address, which is this one, right? The 32-bit address scheme. No. We can ignore that. This we need to keep. This is right. We don't need that and we don't need that. Um, So what I need out of here is I need to mask off seven bits of that. So I need to mask this off with um, Is it? Uh, is there a quicker way of doing this? Actually, so what that would be is zero. to mask it because this bit's already going to be set on here which I'm going to or these this this is the mask for the seven bits of this byte but is there an easier way of doing this where that's one Whatever. You geniuses can let me know if you know of a quicker way of doing that. So basically I want to take the least significant seven bits of this and then add that with uh, effectively, let's do it in binary so it's obvious. Yeah. You see what I'm doing? So this is the read-write bit, which we're setting to 1 for write. Wait a minute, do we, is, is write 0 or 1 with the spy mem, Laurie? I forget. I forget which way around it is. It might be 0 for write and 1 for read. Can you remember? If it's 0, that makes the whole thing a lot easier.
If it's zero, I just need this. I don't need this additional step. Spy member has zero for right. So because this is going to be zero anyhow, because I'm ending with zero, so it's going to come out zero, I don't need to or it with that. This will work as is. That will give me the correct 7-bit address and the MSB at zero, which means right. Yeah. But I probably shouldn't be doing all of these because I'm not really using those. So those should be like zero, effectively. Those should be like um, I'm really not interested in those. Oh, what am I doing? Done it wrong. Right. I know this is a longhand way of saying it. What, what I'm doing here is I'm building up a 2 to the 23 address of which the most significant 7 bits are represented for the 7 bits of that. The upper bits of the 32 bit number are all zeroed. And then the lower two bytes of the 32 bit are, are actually the address that gets passed. Why has this got a problem? What have I done now? I'm missing. Okay, is that right? Um, shit, what have I done here? I should have copied that.
Right, I overwrote that bracket, that's why it's complaining. There's a quicker way of doing this as well. These could just be ended with zero to start with. Um, Ord with zero even. This is kind of a longhand way of doing it. But I think that's now right. And then we've got to do the length thing. So Oh, what's that doing down there? It should be there. And then, you know, if we did a similar thing down below, uh, oh, I need to change that as well. But. If, if we were to copy and paste that, for 04 we'd have, um, this would have to be anded with 1, basically, no, awed with 1. This would be zero B one six, seven uh, and no or or because it's a right command the MSB has to be one. The rest of it's the same. Um, why doesn't it like that? Oh, because it's not a word. Um, then the other thing we've got to do is we've got to look at um, length count. I mean, count. Is it count? Yeah, count. So what we need to do is we need to work out how many times we're going to call this. So we need to count modulo 16, don't we? Ooh. Modulo 16. Is that right? I think of this. Um, And then what we need is a, um, what do we need? Let's just check actually. Do I already do this here? In this one, I didn't. I don't know if we need to, do we need to do that?
Um, I need this to be it's not minus sixteen, is it? It's minus Well it's either gonna be minus sixteen or it's gonna be if it's less than sixteen. Count, count down is less than if length. Uh, length is going to equal. Yeah, the read's going to be much harder. I want to get right working first. Let's walk before we run, so to speak. Um, so lens going to be equal to count, right? Uh, so initially that's going to equal count. So this is true except with the case, except in the last time round, but it's, we can do that afterwards. So if um, then is um, greater than zero, then we need to do the remaining bytes. Um, we're not sending length here, are we? So, uh, that's always going to be 16. And then here, it's whatever's left. Um, to transaction len equals len minus 16. So it's going to take 16 off each time. It's always going to be 16 bytes. Um, I guess the exception here is if it's less than 16 to start with. Hold on, why is this just beeped? Don't just give me a real beat. Hold on. Visited Twinkles back. So in the case where um, transaction is zero, then this won't be called. This will be called, right? Do folks concur with my logic?
with me for a second, folks. Knocking all my things on the floor. Like you do. And the cat wants to come out now. Very well. Play nicely with foxes. Have I lost everyone? Is that going to work? This print's going to be wrong. What happens if it's if count is divisible by sixteen? There'll be no remainder, so. It will just run this that many times. Length will then be zero, right? So this won't run. So it will just run this. Oh, will that run that once? This will be one, won't it? Len will be negative. But yeah, that's okay. Mind you. I haven't said that it's a U8. If I make this signed. Those are all I have. Mm. Is it SA? Do they call it SA? It's not highlighting in the way that it should do. <laughs> What's the type for signed? Is it SA? God, I so rarely use it now. Um, Oh no, I'm being a twat. <laughs> it's I. <laughs> For integer. <laughs> oh god. My brain is off on one. Thank you, Weston. <laughs> it's, clearly, it's getting late. So we should be safe, right? As long as it's signed. This will still be still do the right thing. But will this run once? God, now you got me thinking. If that's one, that does that will iterate once, won't it? <laughs> oh, it's Friday night. And I haven't been doing my rust much recently. Have I got a copy of the Rust book open? I normally have one kicking around. Um, 
Let's have a quick, let's look it up just to make sure it will save us some embarrassment. Uh, let's just double check. I'm past it. Where is it? Uh, control and flow. Action status type mutability for its bios. I'm probably trucks. Enums, blah 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 blah. Now we're going to use vectors. Come on, where's a simple one? Did I go all the way past it or what? Installation, no, 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 data types, functions, comments, control flow. There we go. It's got to be in here, surely. So, repetition with loops. There we go. do four in their examples. Really? Maybe I went past it. <laughs> oh my god. No search results for it's a three letter word for in. Oh, come on. Mm. Repetition with loops. Patterns and matching. Patterns and matching, program guessing game. I don't want iterators because it will show me the wrong thing. Oh God, how annoying. This is lifetimes for number in number list. Now it's an iterator that returns an iterator. That's not going to help me. I need to know what how it deals with integers. Four. Oh, this one might help us. Four. I in naught to one hundred. Do something. Right. So the rest of it's uh, uh, so because this code. You record and do something function 100 times. So what that's saying is it starts from zero and goes to 99. Annoying that it doesn't spell it out. None of these are linked. Warren Fox is chasing you, Twinkle. You came in a bit sharpish. You shouldn't buzz them. Oh!
I'm going to assume it does run once, but we may need to check that. It's doing my head in. I thought the rust book would cover that. Really. I'm guessing that if it's one, it will run once. Otherwise, the world is upside down. But then we're in rust, so it might be might be the case. Let's assume that that works. I wonder if I can compile that now. It's a good place to check. Let me increase the size of this so that you guys can see it as well. Oh, it's already got some errors. What have I done? What's that crap? There's a warning. I do need to solve that. Uh, oh, look, I've got a rogue C just sitting there all by its lonesome. Uh, mismatch types. Expected mutt U816. Ah, okay. Right, yeah, I'm. Uh, what have I done here? What have I done? Yeah, that's wrong not buff five at all it's a slice god gotta remember how to do slices um we need to be cutting into we need 16 bytes but it needs to go from Length to sixteen. Mm, twinkles, what are you doing? You've been eating your biscuits. Yeah, I will push the changes, Laurie. I've, just, I've got to get it compiling. I've got to do something first. I don't know how we're doing for time. I bet we're running late. Jesus, yeah, it's just 11 already here. I'm not going to do this much longer. Let me see if I can solve the compiler. So what I want to do here is slices. Let me just find slices because they work slightly differently. Slice. So, not to 5. So that's the syntax, isn't it? So what we're talking about here is passing in 16 of whatever's here or um, so this will be length, length minus 16 so that will be from Let's get this is going down because we're counting down. And with the bytes we're taking will be from 5 to initially it will be 5 to 16. No, it will be 5 to 17. No, it will be 5 plus 5 plus 16. This is where we need T. But 
It needs to start off at five. Index. Initially that needs to equal 5 because that's where we're starting on the index, right? And then we're adding 16 each time. Use the shorter hand. So this starts at 5. And then it goes up by 16 each time. But it should do that after. No. Actually, this will go up automatically. I don't need T. God, my brain really isn't working properly at the moment. Index plus, index two. Uh, index plus 16, but it looks like we're doing this addition twice, which looks dodgy, which means I've written this wrong. So this would be the index of the first, it, from a slice point of view, this will start off at five because that's the next buffer. Because all of these ones were commands and addresses, right? Um, and then that will go plus 16 effectively. And then we increment 16 afterwards. But this will do two pluses, but the compiler should be clever enough to work that out. Yeah, but this just involves one addition each time. I'm just to avoid multiple additions. And it should be clear enough to work out that this addition happens twice. But 
I mean, you could explicitly say, you know, old index equals index and then index if you want to do it by longhand then you'd say do it like that and you know that you've only put one addition in there but the compiler should be able to work it out yourself anyhow it just seems you know surplus I mean I'm not checking for errors or anything but there you go um, and then here it should be index colon len No. That could work. This is fucked up. No. Right, what I need to do here is neaten this shit up. It's rather a long string. Right to command X2 address X8 with that many bytes maybe I should end that but whatever that might sort of work
So yeah, command address buffer slice length view size. Oh, types len. Really, that should be um, fuck off. What's worrying me slightly about this is. because we're using an integer there, that's probably not healthy. I'm hoping that conversion from an integer works, for, works well. Anyhow, let's just do a compile, because it's bound to complain. what have I done here? Not found in this scope. Is the U8 going to be big enough for that? It's up to 256 times 16s. It's, <sighs> it's highly unlikely. I suppose we'd better be safe. I don't know what the buffer is for the USB endpoint. I can't remember. Uh, cannot find value transactions. Wait a minute. God, how many errors did I do? This is uh, just for us being very smart. Oh, being a twat. Wrong syntax. I'm not using Python. Honestly. Expected U32 found U size. Oh, of course. Because count is U size. 
and U size. Does it matter? I don't know what U size is. Um, I could just leave it to make its own assumptions what happens then. Do I hear you shouting pedantic? Rust? Mismatch type. Let mutt len I ate count. Expected I ate found you size course. I kind of almost want to make that um, a U size len. But if I do that this won't work. I wonder what happens if you make try and make U size less than zero. Uh. in transactions no it's range zero two transactions it's returning an i32 uh, ugly but I'm not using T so it doesn't matter let's get that um, Rust will complain if I don't do that. The type U8 cannot be indexed by range U8 618. Range U8. Oh. So what does it suggest? Slice indices of type U size or ranges of U size. So these need to be index needs to be U size. Expected hmm. probably still going to complain about this. Is where it gets complicated because of lifetimes and God knows what else. Uh, Mismatch type. Expected array U8 16 found slice U8. Um, can I change the function? Oh, 
when this ends well happens if I do that Bonjour. I normally have two windows open for this so I don't have to scroll backwards and forwards but there's not screen estate enough for such tricks. He's complaining about Len. So I'm using Len here, and Len is not a U size. What happens if I do Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's got to be a shortcut like there is in Python. Um, that God, I wrote a tiny little bit of code and I muffed it all. It's obviously too late and I'm not thinking properly. Right, it doesn't like my conversion here. Um, Trait from I32 is not implemented for U32.
sure that's what I did before. What have I done here? Oh, that's because this is an integer. Uh, do I put you on the end of that? Binary. Which is converting to an integer for some reason. Because this is a literal zero. Do I actually need this bit? Will that be zero anyhow? happens if I just did that? Not sure if that will work actually, but here we go. Oh, it's still having a problem with this. Jesus fucking Christ. Excuse my French. Because well, I haven't done it here. Unused variable. Oh, that's because I haven't implemented any of this yet. It can be so very pedantic sometimes. Constant is never used, max reg, okay. Fair enough. Uh, two foot. We might need to protect this at some point, depending on memory address range, but let's just Ignore it for the moment. Damn it, it's actually running. Um, I think it's a bit late for actually testing this now because it's half past 11 and I'm losing it. Um, I'm going to leave that for now. I'm not going to go down this this rabbit hole because it probably won't work.
Hmm. I'm going to commit this even though it might not work, just so that you can have a look at it. Uh, added and tested Q spy. Oh, was it used by mem to black crap? I pushed it in here, Laurie, so you can have a look at it. I know it's untested, but it doesn't stop anything working right now. And then I'm trying to think what I had before. I was, um, what was I using? Seven segment. And then I was doing this kind of thing. So for the seven segments, I was sending the command byte array. Let me um, zoom in. Oh, you can't see this, can you? Sorry, let me just switch back just so that you know what's going on. If you look in the seven segment um, dot pi example, I'm assuming you're still there, Laurie. You may not be um, still awake. But um, what you can do is this kind of thing here. This is how you send over the bus. So in this case, the byte array here, you won't be a zero command, it would be a zero. I think it's. So I'll write another one. It will probably look like, let me zoom in a bit as well so you can see what I'm doing here. So that will be zero free. Uh, and then you'd have, you know, an address, whatever that might be. So I guess it'd be zero, 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 zero. And then, you know, some address. Like, I don't know, zero, one, zero, zero, or something. Is that the right number? Of, so these two bits should be zero. Those two bits should be zero. It should be less than seven bits, and that should be zero. And then you'd have to have, um, so all of these would be. So that's the address. And then you'd have to have all of your data after this. So you'd need to have the length, which and because you've got the length, uh, I haven't written the software right. I've missed a trick. <sighs> then you need to do you have to add length and data bytes onto these. Yeah. So that's basically the command and the address and then you'd add the length which is a U8, and then the data up to 256 bytes, presumably. Um, on, and that's, I 
I'll just copy that. So I'm not going to commit that change. I'll just copy that to here and you can copy it. Um, but I've just realized I've done something very stupid because I haven't actually looked at length foolishly. So if we go back to the black crab, I'm an idiot. So basically what I was doing is in the previous example, I was addressing the seven segment display, but I, I haven't written the HDL for all of that yet. You'd have to add that in. But I've just realized the uh, Black Crab software itself isn't looking at the length character that's sent. Stupidly. We're just looking at the count. So when we come here, we've got count number of bytes. Yeah. That the USB has received. But what we're not doing is decoding the length we're sending. And that should be included really, because what we don't know is how many times this is going to be called. This may not be called with all of the data that's sent, if there's a lot of data. This may be called several times, depending on how big the buffer is for the USB, right? And the maximum size of the endpoint buffer. So this count isn't len, unless len happens to be smaller than you know, the buffer size of this endpoint. In other words, we could be sent this multiple times. So we might need to be a bit smarter about how we're doing this rather than just using count. But if we assume the length we're sending is always less than the buffer, the uh, endpoint buffer for the USB. So in other words, if we didn't send any more than 256 bytes, then we'd be fine. The endpoint buffer, if I remember rightly, may be defined by, because we, when we set the USB device up here, we set the EP memory, endpoint memory. And that is set, if I remember rightly here, as 1024 bytes. So if we limited it to 256 that we are sending, then we'd always be within that. But I'm not sure how this endpoint memory is used. Is some of it used for reading and some of it used for writing? Or is it kind of a, does it have a kind of duplex use? Sorry, I've gone past where we are now. To the endpoint memory, what are we? Is that, I'm, is that, you know, is that all allocated to read, or is half of it read, half of it write, or I've no idea. But we're making. What I'm saying is, we're making a heck of an assumption um, by using this count here, because we could be reading chunks if it was a large amount. But if we limit the number of bytes we send so that the buffer has never completely filled up, then this will be okay, this will possibly work. It's just something we'll have to bear in mind. Yeah, so one character is very short for a length. Um, it would be good to send a whole file. Yeah, I mean, we've. Our solution is going to have to be a bit more sophisticated, Laurie. Yeah. But for now, let's just stick to sending small amounts and get that working first. 
then we'll deal with larger sizes. In which case then what's going to happen is this is going to be called numerous times. So we can't be using count here really as you know len. Uh, we'd actually have to receive len as one of the characters after the address or something. Yeah. So I've kind of oversimplified it. I've underfought it. Are you with me, Laurie, with what I'm sending? Because that may be enough just to get us testing the HDL side of QSPI and get that working first. Once we get that working, we can then think about solving the bigger problem where we're sending more than, you know, the number of bytes that the buffer for the endpoint may contain. Because once we get to that, we then have to have a um, we have to have a long count account that we can access each time. You know, count here is set um, every time it's called. But what we'd need to do is use, you know, a, a local, what's called a local variable here, which is, you know, keeps the length and keeps decrementing count from it. So if we're called multiple times, we account for that, if that makes sense. Is that the one I've just pushed that you're talking about, Laurie? It should build okay. But I mean, you actually need to try sending some of that stuff. And you also need to somehow have something use the sbus.py, maybe bolted onto the seven segment initially. Just try sending one byte or something, I don't know. Anyhow. That's all I'm doing for today. It's been a long week. It's quarter of the midnight. And I need to take a break and a chill. And we can do some more on this next week and you can have a look at it tomorrow if you get time. Okie doke folks. Um, thanks for joining me. Thanks for staying with me. I'm surprised how many people have. Especially given the games to begin with, I'm trying to get a decent, uh, uh, you know, streaming rate. But anyhow, I will stream again on Wednesday. Probably not stream again before then, but I'll be down on Discord. So join me down on there, um, and I'll keep everyone in a loop. Ciao.